The Cape Verde island of Sal boasts one of the world's greatest waves. Ponta Preta enjoys perfect right-handers that curl around the rocky point, and consistent offshore breezes give the wave a hollow quality that makes this African spot a kitesurfing nirvana. For the Qatar Airways GKA World Tour, it's the ideal place to kick off the 2023 kitesurf season, but the wave's unique characteristics make it challenging for newcomers, so Cape Verdeans, well-versed in its idiosyncrasies, have the edge. Everybody's good at their own home spot. But if you want to be a complete competitor, you need to know how to throw it down in the perfect one eye or perfect Punta Preta. You need to have to be a, do it in the vast majority of the reality of your average kaita, which is a cross onshore mush, and be able to do it in the medium conditions as well. And I think, you know, the fact of having a tour, and like the word says, a tour all the way around the world, is just going to be, you know, creating those more complete riders. Reigning two-time world champion James Carew knows well what he's up against when he comes to Cape Verde to face off against local kitesurf legends who hold all the cards. But the hard-charging 23-year-old Australian doesn't take prisoners. His biggest passion beyond kitesurfing is pure surfing, which puts him in a good place for one of the world's most challenging breaks. When it comes to waves, his attitude is the bigger the better, so he's not phased by Ponte Preta or the local talent. He's also pushed hard to broaden his considerable talents. But most importantly, he feels he has more to prove, even with back-to-back -back world titles in the bag. I guess it was four years ago now, uh, where this big shift happened in my life. Or I was not who I am now, I was partying a lot, I had a lot of distractions, I was not, uh, I was not a winner. And um, yeah, basically I just decided, hey, I want to win a world title, I want to be the best, and it's time to get serious. Yeah, when James came on tour, we could see the potential. We could see the power. He has always been a very raw individual. Super nice, down to earth. One of those guys that always has a smile. But he did have that beast inside of him. At the beginning, when James came to the tour, he was a pure surfer. He didn't like freestyle. He didn't want to be doing the freestyle maneuvers because he's one of those athletes that as the surf gets bigger and bigger, his smile just gets bigger and bigger. He likes the adrenaline and we can see now these days you know going out into beasts like Nazare we could see that happening throughout his progression and at that point in time there was a big gap in the in the sport you know strap freestyle was coming and everybody was saying no I want to do waves I want to do this I want to do that I don't want to do strap freestyle but you know I saw this gap and I said now is my chance now is my chance to to separate myself and and become real serious and yeah I just started growing growing myself and every session going in the water thinking like thinking seriously focusing and, and actually improving you know getting something from the session rather than just going in the water then when he started to see that he had the possibility of maybe becoming a world champion everything switched he went completely warrior mode he is a very very demanding young person he's a very determined young guy and you could just see that he was looking to find his path. So the first thing I did was, you know, I started studying people who are, are, are great athletes, great sports people who have become the best, you know, like Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, Conor McGregor, people like this. What they all do is they all have like a, as Kobe Bryant says, they have a championship mindset. You know, they wake up in the morning, a champion. They go to sleep in the afternoon, champion. At the beginning, it was going as hard as possible. And I think that was with a lot of things in his life. And then slowly but surely he saw that, hey, maybe if I you know, train a little bit more outside, maybe if I look after my diet, maybe if I don't go out so much, maybe if I put concentration, especially on his mind. You wake up, you do your routine, you stretch, you have a good breakfast, you eat well, you, know, you start your day right. And then you know, write down your goals, think about what you want and, and move towards them. You know, you don't have to achieve your goal every day, but move towards your goal every day. Going back to my first world title in Morocco, the situation had played out a million times before. So when the situation actually came, it was not like, oh my God, I did it. It was, it was just like, yeah, I did it, you know, I, it's done, next one. If you win an event, it's more like a surprise party. It was, it was kind of like a planned, it was an event, you know, I just had to set in motion. What really keeps me going is I am not where I want to be yet. Um, I want much more, uh, I want to be a much better rider um, and yeah, I want to be considered one of the greatest, I want to be considered one of the best and you know, 
right now maybe I'm in that conversation, but you know, I'm not there yet. And uh, I know that and I want to be there. Talking to James quite a few times, he says that, yeah, everybody is our friends. But as soon as I go out on the water, the only thing I want to do is rip their heads off. And I think that defines who James Carew is. I see the sport going much further. Uh, you know, just in, in my span of four or five years of competing so far, it has improved ridiculously. Just the stuff that I'm doing now to the stuff I was doing, it's, it's another level, you know. At one point it was not even possible what we're doing now. So it, uh, it's also something that's changed that, you know, those things that once you thought were not possible, now they're possible, you know, now you're doing them every day. So yeah, it's, I think the things that are in my mind now that are not possible yet, there will be, you know, it's just a matter of time. It's, it's a new sport, so we're always improving, we're always doing different things. I think um, there's, there's going to be a lot of different levels to this. Um, it's, uh, we just have to wait and see, really. For all Caru's newfound focus and drive, it wasn't to be this time round in Cape Verde. He came up against former world champion Ayrton Cozzolino, who was battling in his own backyard. Cozzolino edged out Caru by the narrowest of margins, shattering the Australian's dreams. I'm very disappointed with the result. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's over. It is what it is. And luckily we have a lot of event this, events this year, so it may not matter. Going into this event, I really wanted to win, but I think I was not as focused on winning as I was last year. The shock exit of the world champion left the Ponta Preta playing field wide open. But on home turf, the Cape Verdeans appeared to have the edge. The men's semi-final delivered spine-tingling action. Brazilian Pedro Matos was the odd man out, the only non-Cape Verdean. But he didn't appear thrown by his status. He drove hard, charging every wave face like his life depended on it. But he came up against Machu Lopez, who rides Ponta Preta on his favoured backside. Lopez was on fire and took the win. Two of the biggest beasts in kite surfing went head to head in the second All Cape Verdean matchup. Ayrton Cozzolino went wild, throwing floaters on top of the lip, big 360 rotations that wowed the crowd. But Mitu Montero also gave them something to shout about. The 39 year old veteran emerging from a barrel at the end of their tense heat was enough to prize the win from Cozzolino's grasp. So confirmation of those results means that Machu Lopez will face Mitu Montero in the final. In the race for the third podium spot, Pedro Matos rode as if he was out for blood. In the sinking sun, he lucked into one of the biggest sets of the day in the small final. Matos rode with commitment, throwing grab dares to complement his huge laid back hacks. He was relentless, attacking every wave with huge verve. But it wasn't quite enough and he would finish fourth. I surfed well all competition long, getting good scores. There were some amazing waves, but we depend on the timing of nature to score a good wave, and sometimes it doesn't come your way. So nothing I can do, and that's it. I have to accept it, go back home and train for the next stop in Rio de Janeiro. The Brazilian had the misfortune to come up against Ayrton Cozzolino, his earlier semi-final defeat seeming to light a fire under him. Cozzolino tore every wave to bits. He even netted a 9.67 from a possible 10 for one wave that took his heat total to 18.87, the highest of the competition. His air reverses, barrels and 360s brought roars of delight from the swelling crowds on the beach. It was pure high-octane theatre. Well, I'm stoked to have like uh, such a 
best podium we had in a long time, you know. Against uh, me two and Machu, we uh, like I was in the third and uh, Machu won, me to second. Super stoked to have uh, to share the podium with them. We've been spoke with this since we were a kid, and uh, that finally uh, dream come true. And yeah, I'm super stoked with my result. I mean, the, the season is still uh, long ahead, so I'm gonna do all my best to come on top. And this was the event. Cabo Verde, thank you so much. Thank you to all the people for cheering for us. So the small final sees Ayrton Cozzolino finish in third and Pedro Matos fourth in the overall standings. So just one match up left and it was, as far as the locals were concerned, the dream final. Cape Verde heroes battling it out on home waters. The legend that is Mitu Montero was coming back from a break, eager to prove to adoring fans that he still got it. He knows the Ponte Preta break like the back of his hand, and what a show he put on. In the smaller set waves, Montero tirelessly extracted every gram of potential from the faces. But despite his best efforts, it wasn't quite enough, and he ended up in second. Um, well, after a few years, um, when I, like, I stopped competing, so it's really nice to be here. I got this podium. Um, Actually, you know, when, when I decided to compete, like I say, it was for my family and also for uh, all my friends here in Cape Verde, because we have a party here, why not to be part of it? Um, then, second here, I had a podium. I have a chance to have a podium with Machu and Ayrton. So for me, this is a dream come true, because then I have like, you know, like all this support from Cape Verde. So uh, I'm really stoked about my, my result. Montero had come up against his protege, Machu Lopez, and the youngster showed he had what it took to face down his master. He didn't wilt under the pressure from fans or even his old friend and hero. Riding backside, he rode every wave with commitment and never looked back. It gave him an emotional win, one that he has long dreamed of. I'm absolutely stoked to finish here in the first place and then going on a hit with Me Too, which is somebody that I admire so much since I was a kid. I'm talking since I'm fifth or, or sixth, I was always behind him, always wanted to do like him, and then I changed my mind, I said, okay, I want to be like him, I want to travel the world, I want to be world champion, I want to do this. And I'm going to hit with him here, it's priceless. Unfortunately, the win, the win and the ways were, weren't there exactly, but I did my job. This has no price, this is priceless. This is, this is just God know right now, I don't even know. Just as the men's champion James Caru came unstuck in Cape Verde, the women's title holder Capuchin Delanoy faced her own hurdles. But for the French 17-year-old, the challenge comes in a different guise, the formidable figure of Hawaii-based Muna White. The American is returning after a four-year break from competition. Ponte Prete is the scene of her 2019 victory on one of her favorite waves mirroring her home breaks of Oahu. But Delanoy has youth and burning ambition on her side, even as she takes on one of her idols. When I was seven, we were living in France, and then my parents decided to move to Brazil. So my dad taught me how to kite, and I absolutely loved it. And then I think I was 11, I went on my first competition to watch Canil that was competing on the JKA already. And I saw some girls competing and I was like, whoa, that's what I want to do. And at the end of the year, there was a competition at my home spot and I took part of it and since then I'm on tour. She was this little girl that came out on a strapless board and just went wild out there on the water. I've been doing the full tour for two years and uh, yeah, I'm studying online. It works very well. So I usually study in the morning and kite in the afternoon. 
and when there's competition I don't study and then when there's no competition I study more so it depends. School is my main priority at the moment, it comes first and that's what the most important at the end of the day is that I've done all my school work well and uh, yeah I usually try to do all my exams and then when I'm done I go kiting but it works very well, I managed to keep the focus in both worlds. You see her on the, on the sand and she's you know, she's super petite, she's really, really relaxed, a little bit laid back. You go out on the water with her and she is full throttle. She is right up there in your face and she has a competitive fire. You can see it really as soon as she goes into that competitive mode, there's no prisoners. Since I started, I told my dad, like, I want to be a world champ and it worked twice. And uh, yeah, the goal for the next years is to get more world titles. When I decided I was gonna, I wanted to be a world champion, I was like, okay, if I want to be a world champion, I have to do to train in the waves too. So that's when I started. At the beginning, I didn't like it, but now I just love it so much. And at every session, I love it more and more. And yeah, that's my focus for now to really focus on the waves and get a higher level. When it comes to the Delanois family, they're very fortunate to have their parents and the way they look after their kids. You know, you see Camille with Kapusin. He's the older brother. He makes sure she's in line, gives them the space, but also it's necessary a little bit of a tap to get back online. And I think for all of the young athletes, it is so important that at that age, what surrounds you makes you. Yeah, Camille and I are super close and I'm super grateful for that. You know, he's my best friend and uh, we always travel together. And also it's really nice because he's way older than me. He's seven years older than me. So he just teaches me so much and I learned so much from him. And uh, it's just so nice to be able to have this relation with your brother. And we travel together and we also compete together. And these moments are just so nice because competition, there's just so many emotions. And to be able to share that with him is really nice. For the moment, I just love this sport and I want to help it like get more and more known and I hope to inspire younger girls also to get into strapless and uh, yeah just to push the limits of this sport, learn new tricks, ride bigger waves and that's the goal. I think I met my biggest rival on this competition, you know, Muna, she is uh, amazing. When I was 11 I went on my first uh, competition to watch my brother and Muna was taking the win in Cap Verde. And then I was like, whoa, I want to do the same. And she's like a real big inspiration to me. And uh, yeah, she's just really good. And I didn't like to be in a hit with her, you know, she was just so good. And I was like, whoa, but it's super nice for the sport. And I'm super happy that she's back into competition. Yeah, I was competing for a long time and then took a little break. I decided to come back to this competition just because I love this location. I love Ponte Preta and that wave. Competition is always been on my mind this whole time since I stopped, but I, I guess this location is what brought me back. We didn't have as many events as there are now, but I was traveling a lot and yeah, getting a little bit tired of competing. Um, also, the tour was heading a little bit more into the strapless freestyle discipline, and I really like pure surf wave riding. I wasn't sure if the tour would go back to more wave riding, but um, I'm happy that that seems like it's the direction it's going now. So during the last few years where I wasn't competing, um, I was home a lot, which is in Hawaii. And um, we have really nice conditions there for surfing and kite surfing. I mean, she is a very fortunate young athlete to be able to live out in Hoahu, Hawaii. Probably one of the best places when it comes to waves, but I think she also is the demonstration that doing all different disciplines, all different sports of wave riding, it doesn't matter then what you jump onto, you still are going to perform. In the town that I grew up in, all the little kids learn to surf at like such a young age and the ocean is just part of everyone's life. Anytime you see Muno on the beach, she's happy. She really loves to be near the ocean. If you follow her a little bit, you can see everything, her life revolves around surfing, it revolves around being in contact with nature. And when nature is calling her, you can see her start to get the energy and start to get that vibe. It's really cool to see the younger girls coming in, the new generation of girls. Um, they're like 13, 14, 15, 16, like, and they're way better than I was at that age. So I think they have a really promising career ahead of them. Um, it's really cool to see them out in these waves too. Ponta Preta's challenging point break was the perfect stage for both athletes to show how far the women's game has advanced.
In the women's semi-finals, Brazil's Kessian Rodriguez shows why she burst onto the kite surf circuit last year with a tour stop win. But she came up against Muna White and the American got the better of the battle with stylish hacks in the critical sections of the wave. Pretty challenging out there with the small waves. There's not that many sets coming through and it's close to the rocks, but wind is good, good direction, so I'm soaked. <laughs> Brazil's Bruna Caggia found herself on the wrong end of a tight battle with Capuchin Delanoy. Both women worked with the few waves on offer as best they could. It was fun, conditions were kind of hard. Like it was super tricky to take, to take waves and to go out green, but in the waves it was super fun. I think I advanced it, I'm not sure, but I think so, so super happy. So the two favourites, Muna White and Capuchin Delanoy, would face off in the final. Meanwhile, the small final was an all-Brazilian affair. The three-time kite freestyle world champion Bruna Caggia showed all her competition experience in the small final race for the third podium spot. But the 36-year-old, a relative newcomer to kite surf battles, just lost out in the tight contest. Still, she was thrilled with her fourth place finish. I'm very happy with my result. I've just started in waves and I'm still riding switch, which is not my best side. So this is a very special result for me. I love the waves. I have so much fun. And to be able to surf a spot like Ponta Preta with just one other person out, that was really special for me. Kessian Rodriguez's fully committed riding illustrated why she is a force to be reckoned with. The young Brazilian displayed power and flow. And her huge hacks even gave her fins a little bit of fresh air. The judges had no choice but to give her third place. I am very happy to be here at Ponta Preta for the first time. Incredible conditions, amazing waves. The wind was also great. It's the first time I've ridden in big conditions like this, so I'm very happy about my result and my progress. I think Ponta Preta is one of the best spots I've ever surfed in my life. I came here very confident. I only had one day to train before the comp, but it was a good day and I managed to adapt to the offshore wind. The wind in Brazil is normally onshore, so I'm very happy with my result and hoping to reach even further in the next events. So confirmation in the overall classification, Kessian Rodriguez takes third, Bruna Caggia fourth. The women's final was a taut affair. The reigning world champion, Capuchin Delanoy, knew she would have her work cut out for her as she sought to defend her coveted crown. The teenager came out firing, working small right-handers for all they were worth. More than once, she took big risks, toying with Ponta Preta's rocky shallows. Meanwhile, Muna White showed she's lost none of her competitive flair. During her four-year break from the tour, she seems to have only improved with age. The American's wave selection was impeccable. Even in the tricky conditions, her snaps off the lip and her flowing style in the pocket impressed the judges. It was enough to give her the edge and take victory in Ponta Preta once again. I wasn't sure coming into this event if I was going to continue with the whole tour, but after winning this one, um, I'm definitely considering continuing on and doing the whole tour. I know how competitions can be. Um, sometimes we don't have the right wave conditions and we will end up doing 
Japanese freestyle, so I'll definitely have to train very hard this year if I do want to continue competing. And um, yeah, it would be really cool to, to do the whole tour again. So a victorious return to competition for Mona White taking first place ahead of the Frenchwoman, Capuchine Delanoy. Once again, Ponte Preta delivered an epic canvas for the best kite surfers to display their athletic artistry. On both sides of the draw, experience was the telling factor. The Cape Verdean men with home court advantage had their day in the sun. Muna White dominated by picking perfect waves and displaying unmatched surfing. Reigning champions Capuchin Delanoy and James Carew learned valuable lessons. They'll all be back and hungrier than ever, eager to demonstrate their versatility in perhaps less than perfect conditions at the season's upcoming tour stops. Join us for more and follow their journey.